This is Twit. I want to talk a little bit about the the research. I mean, your book is so detailed, down to the words that people use. Um, Ross is, you know, just like his. He would say fudge instead of the other F word that we're all familiar with. And so I know you never talked to him, like he wouldn't talk to you. Um, talk a little bit about how you did your research for this book. Well, I, in my last book, Hatching Twitter, um, which was about the the chaos that brought Twitter to where it is today and, and fighting and backstabbing. Uh, first, when I first started reporting that, none of the reporters, uh, sorry, none of the, the board members that um, I spoke to, uh, they, none of them wanted to talk to me, none of them, the, you know, the big, big, big players. And so what I did was I started going, and they eventually all spoke to me, but in the beginning they didn't. And I, so the way I got there was I started um, looking at their Twitter feeds uh, um, over the years and seeing what they had tweeted about at certain events and moments and things like that. And it started to, it shed a lot of light on, um, on who these people were. And so they spoke to me without actually speaking to me. And so the same thing happened with American Kingpin. Um, you know, Ross Ulbricht had lived his life uh, mostly online for several years, um, either as the Dread Pirate Roberts running the website or as Ross Ulbricht communicating with his friends and writing things about libertarian beliefs on social media. And so we originally, my research, I have a researcher that I work with, and we went through and we took all of the stuff off social media that he had shared over the years, um, you know, thousands of posts and photos and videos and comments and things like that. And we put it into a database based on time. And then we started going through all the evidence that was put into um, evidence in New York at the trial. And then I started doing what I do as a reporter and getting things that other people had, including emails he'd sent to friends and girlfriends and family and, um, and photos and videos of him and eventually chat logs from the conversations he had had with his employees and all this stuff added up to, it was probably like five, six million words of stuff. Um, and we put it all into this database and then we could kind of cross correlate it. So for example, and it all added up, you know, just unbelievably uh, perfectly. So for example, when the Dread Pirate Roberts who ran the Silk Road would, um, uh, say, oh, I'm, I'm going away for the weekend to his employees. I want you to manage the site. He would log off and you would see Ross Ulbricht, the real human being, go on Facebook and uh, say, off to go camping this weekend. Um, and then when he returned, you know, there would be a photo that Ross or one of his friends would post on, on, um, on Facebook and um, of that camping trip and the timestamps and so on. And the Dread Pirate Roberts would log back on and talk about a great weekend he had with his friends and a girl he met. Um, and this happened thousands and thousands of times in the, in the chat logs and the social media accounts and so on. Um, and then you couple that with the interviews that I did, which was probably, I don't know, a few hundred hours, maybe a thousand hours of interviews with law enforcement going to the places that these events happened, the library where he was arrested and so on. Um, and you're able to paint this picture of this incredibly detailed story um, that's better than than spending a thousand hours with Ross asking him questions. 